Come on, put your hands together and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you the highest praise. Oh, most holy God. With our voice. Come on, sing it with us, oh most holy God. And with our voice. Wonderful counselor, say. Eh? We love you. Let's say it again, he's a wonderful counselor. We love you. Let's say hallelujah. Holy God said, We lift up our hands and with our voice. Let's say that again. Oh, most holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. Sing it, God. Come on, let's say it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power, glory. Put your hands together and glorify it.
everybody, Carlton Pearson. Thanks for tuning in tonight to our Azusa specials reminding the saints of the hope. We came up with this admonition in our souls because of the pandemic and the depression, the anxiety and the hopelessness and helplessness that we initially felt and uh, several months ago when, when COVID first hit, particularly the disproportionate amount of African-Americans who were um, um, highly prone to, to contracting the disease and did and died, some of them. So there was a lot of upset and I just felt this reminding the saints. So when I say the saints, I mean particularly, but not exclusively, the people from my particular classical Pentecostal roots, Church of God in Christ, we called ourselves the saints. Our convocation in Memphis uh, said the saints are coming. Bishop Mason, I had a dream of him in 1977 when he left, he sat on my bed all that night and when he left that morning, he said, and this is all I remember of the entire encounter, is remind the saints of the hope. And that was very powerful in my spirit. And I heard that, I think in 1977, I, 10 years later, I tried to have the first Azusa. We didn't really have till, uh, until 1988. But Oral Roberts had said to me that he felt the next great revival would come to and through the black church. That was before Azusa, before we ever heard of Paul Morton or T.D. Jakes or even Miles Monroe, even though I knew Miles as a, as a colleague at Minot College. So a lot happened and I think it was prophetic. And I think that's the way we were to close the 20th century. And Azusa began it and Azusa closed it. The conference, and the revival, the revival was the greatest. We had a conference not to compete, but to complete what we believe the Holy Ghost had started in the 20th century. And now we're in the 21st century and there's a new spiritual paradigm. But I'm reminding you, I'm taking you back to those sacred, precious memories and moments. In the uh, Pentecostal and black church, but not exclusively again, but particularly this particular genre of music, of repetitious music, of rhetorical music, of, of the, the nuances of our songs and our souls and the quickening and the weeping and the Hammond B3 organs. And there's just a something, uh, something very unique about that particular expression and that particular experience. And so we bring it to you to remind you, and most people of color and culture in this country relate to it. And even if you're not familiar with the genre, you feel the, the, the essence of it. You feel the anointing. You feel that, that appointing that comes with that kind of anointing. So we give God the highest praise. That was an experience of our worship. Always praising God for God's goodness, for whatever we felt as we count our blessings every day. And David Smith, who is one of my nearest and dearest friends on the planet, uh, produced that album and several of our Azusa albums. This was called We Cry Out. So he and Carmelita wrote the song together and uh, we recorded it. And so you just saw it and heard it and I'm sure you felt it as you will the rest of the things we present on tonight's program. Our next song, and remember, this is to minister to you where you're hurting by reminding you of the hope of your heart, which was prayer and worship and looking to God, trusting the Lord with all of your might. Don't lean to your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge Him, God, and He, God, will direct or even correct, even erect our paths. That's what we need right now. Correction, direction, and erection of the path that we're going because we don't know what's going to happen next. It may get worse before it gets better, but ultimately, it will get better. Pamela Lee, who I introduced you in one of the earlier programs, her husband Jerome blows a saxophone. She's a singer, she directed the choir, sweetest little thing. She's now a widow living in Houston, Texas, precious spirit. But she leads this song that Willie Davis introduced to us on one of our first albums before Azusa. Willie was my first minister of music that we recorded any music on. And he did the celebration of praise. He had a very impacting uh, influence on me personally, on our ministry, travel with me around the country. So I'm doing a lot of remembering, reminiscing, sentimental thoughts, pulling it all back together. And it's refreshing me because we're going out of that 20th century genre into a whole new uh, paradigm. And we don't know exactly how that's going to express itself yet or expose itself. But it's going to be, and I want to be a part of it. So I'm reaching back to that which is most sacred to me. Pam's leading us in this wonderful song, It'll Bless You. I don't know what I'd do without the Lord. Sometimes I wonder where I might be If the Lord didn't come to see about me I don't know what how to pay Without the Lord Yeah He stopped by
Yes, that's the anthem of the Church of God in Christ. It's really the anthem of my soul, saying yes to the God within, the God that speaks in the still quiet voice, the God that makes you sometimes, uh, or motivates you to make still quiet choices in your life. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're saying yes to what we don't know. But just whatever it is, Lord, we're going to go with the flow. We're going to grow with the flow, especially when the flow becomes a flood. And it still may be some flooding times in this country before all of this shifting is over because we're going, America's looking at herself in the mirror and she doesn't like what she sees. And so there's a major uh, facelift that's going on and faith lift that's going on in our country, in our culture, in our character, and in our consciousness. Keep saying yes always say yes. Uh, Lana Harris is one of the top male vocalists in the Christian, contemporary Christian music world and has been uh, for decades. We only had him at Azusa once. I didn't know him well. Uh, he had a larger non-black audience than, than uh, you would have expected. He did a lot of work with the Gaithers and Sandy Patty and that whole um, uh, sort of evangelical, non or less Pentecostal world. But he came to Azusa. He seemed to be a little bit hesitant because I wasn't sure what we were expecting him. him. He doesn't do a lot of hooping and hollering, but he sings like a bird. I mean, he can reach these amazing octaves and he does this duet work. He has a lot of signature songs. The one he did at Azusa uh, is All in Favor Say Hi. I mean, it was a big, big hit across all uh, religious lines. And uh, he sings it this night. Evie Hill was the speaker. And one of my favorite friends, uh, and favorite, America's favorite preachers, did a lot of things with him on TBN, preached at his church, spent time with him. Uh, his son, E.V. Hill Jr., actually received the baptism of the Holy Ghost as a young Baptist boy when I was preaching a revival at the West Angeles Church of God in Christ probably 30, 40 years ago. He came and uh, he wanted the baptism. He came every night to the revival and received it. And he, we talked about it. I said, let's don't tell your dad. Because at that time, E.V. Hill wasn't in that expression of Pentecostalism, though he grew to accept it uh, more. The night he preached, he sort of gave us an instruction about salvation, that being the primary emphasis of all religious expression. And he was excellent. Larnell was sitting behind him and he said to me that night, I remember, well, Larnell was crying. And he said, that's the greatest sermon I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and of course, we've heard the salvation message all of our lives. I didn't think it was extraordinary. It was just E.V. Hill, who himself is extraordinary. I don't, he could be talking about biscuits and he would bring out something practical about it and tie it into the Lord. I love that man. So this was a special night for us. And we had these two non-Pentecostal ministers who carried their own unique anointings. That's what Azusa embraced and expressed. And so uh, E.V. Hill preached the house happy. Larnell sings the house happy, and he had us all in favor, and all of us said yes. Enjoy the song. Yeah. The Lord Jesus deserves our praise. Won't somebody simply agree? What two or three are gathered in his name? He said that down he would be alone. I want a second emotion. Sorry, I'm the father's man.
the start. All right, they've done a whole lot of things in this building. We took pride in integrating our conferences with um, different musical genres, different styles, but it had a certain soulish thing to it. Whether it's Joshua Nelson doing Mahalia Jackson or tonight our next song is going to be Michael English singing In Christ Alone, one of his signature songs or a signature song that was a big hit in the entire Christian world. Uh, whatever song Michael English sang, he sang it with his own signature style. He had a soulishness about him, a sort of a edgy black sound in his singing. And I was always fascinated with white people who could do black stuff, singing, in particular black preaching, or like the UPC, United Pentecostal people who could play a Hammond B3 organ like any person of color, clap on the second and fourth beat, dance like we dance, quicken like we quicken. Uh, well, there's, we have a lot more in common religiously than we don't. And we tried to emphasize that. But this is, uh, uh, you, you never just hear Michael. You feel him. He had a lot of passion or pathos in his life. He went through a lot. Singers and preachers and, and uh, people on the stage often have some huge conflicts in their lives. And you never know what they are, but you can feel it and hear it in their preaching and in their reaching. So he's going to sing this song tonight. And you may have some conflicts in your life. But in Christ alone, that is Christ's consciousness, your consciousness of the messianic presence that you are and that is with you, expressing itself as you in the earth. This is powerful. Feel your Christology, your logic of Christ in you tonight as you hear this song with Michael English at Azusa. Very powerful. Christ alone will I glory, though I could pride myself in battles won for I've been blessed beyond measure and by his strength alone I overcome and oh I could stop and count successes like diamonds in my hand but those trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand in Christ alone I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross in every victory let it be said of me my soul of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. In Christ alone will I glory, for only by His grace I am redeemed, and only mercy could reach beyond my weakness to my knees and now I seek no greater honor than just to know him more and to count my gains but losses to the glory of my
I met Carmen back in 1981, we became fast friends. My emphasis in ministry was then and has always been holiness. He wasn't sure exactly what that meant, but I expressed it to him, got him to fasting and praying and acquiring that special anointing, anointing that comes out of that kind of consecrated life. And he wrote this song, he wrote several songs off of sermons he'd heard me preach. And uh, cause he, when it was a revelation to his soul, he as songwriters do just write songs. And so he wrote this one uh, based on something he'd heard me say according to what his own testimony is. We all have a hunger for not just holiness, but wholeness, being our complete, accurate self, the precise and exact self, not an impersonation of someone else. We don't want to live as imposters. We want to be real and honest and authentic, authored, original self, uh, the, the permanent rather than accidental self. So that, I read that all into this song. It's powerful. He sang it at Azusa, and uh, I love Carmen very much. He'll always be one of my dearest friends, and this crowd loved him, and they love that song, and you will love it too. There's a silent war that's raging deep within me. My lower nature fights to dominate. My spirit man is poised and locked in battle with the carnal side of me I've grown to hate the trumpet of my prayers played towards heaven a voice of desperation in my cry Lord, strengthen me that I might not yield myself to sin, but keep your righteous banner lifted high. Lord, I hunger And I thirst for the righteousness that's yours, that my mind would be cleansed and my spirit. that you dwell in would be pure I twice want to say yes Lord because I hunger and I thirst my soul says yes the tempter stalks about me as a lion searching for the slightest scent of blood for when the skin of my resistance is broken he moves in swiftly to deepen the cut how many of you ever prayed like this oh lord of creation hear your servant 
You alone, you alone, you alone understand the weaknesses of men. I'm counting myself crucified with Jesus, alive to Christ and dead indeed to sin. Because, Lord, I hunger for holiness. How many can say I thirst for the righteousness that's yours? My soul says yes, Lord. I hunger, I hunger and I thirst. My soul says, whatever you ask, Lord, I'm going to say yes. I see yes. I see yes. Touch me, Lord. I need you to reach down and touch me right here and now where I am. Oh, touch me. Oh, touch me. Yes, Lord. I'm going to hear your word and say, Yes, Lord. Because tonight, Lord, I hunger and I thirst. My soul, let it be at Azusa 92, Lord. Well, I can remember that's when I said, All the way, yes. The song you're about to hear um, is the Perfecting Church Mass Choir who came to Azusa. They rented a couple of buses and came all the way from Detroit because Marvin was preaching, Bishop Marvin was preaching that night. The song they sing is one of my favorites ever. And I heard it the first time when I was preaching at Perfecting at one of Marvin's concert, uh, conferences. Uh, they sang this song and then they did the aw amens. In fact, he's the one I heard sing, so you ought to tell him yeah, yeah. I brought those songs back and I taught them to David. I said, I want our choir to do this. And of course, David put his own twist on it, which I love. Our choir happened to sing it better than that, but they really sang it that <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was just, uh, it's a powerful song and uh, it fits anywhere. And it has this um, sort of a, a cathedral, I call it a cathedral anthemic song from something you would, that they would have loved in Europe had they heard it in the 14th century or the 21st century. Marvin, the only, Mar the only one and only Marvin Winans has his music, his ministry all combined and you're gonna feel his anointing, theirs, the anointing in this powerful song, Worthy is the Lamb Slain, Azusa 93.
Giving is something you do. Given is something you are. I emphasize each week and give you an opportunity to give or sow into what we're doing because the comments we get are that people are really, really inspired and encouraged and there's a lot of sentimentality and you think of your mother and your grandmother and people who appear in these videos, many of them have already made their transition. We get to see them. You even see Way Wayman Tisdale several times in the audience. Regina, his lovely wife, very close friends of mine to this day. Uh, and so many of my minister friends who are gone, but it just sort of recollects and reconnects me with a very precious, even though pressured past, but it's healing and it's restorative. And so as you give each week, uh, and you should give more, more of you should give. We're not asking and begging, especially at this tenuous time in the economy of the country. Some of you are getting te checks in the mail and things look a little bit better. So we wouldn't put a lot of pressure on you. I have never done that, but I do encourage you to give the largest gift that you can each week, even if that's only $5 or $50, $25, $100, whatever you give, it really helps us. I'm putting personal funds into this, and I have since the beginning, but then we have old footage that has to be digitized, and out of this, we're helping every week. I help, one church is, is, has fed over 5,000 people. I've been supporting them every month out of the funds we get here. I think the last check was like $500 I sent to them out of our missions, and this helps us with that as well as producing these programs. We want to help hurting people and bring them hope. My godmother called her ministry giving and living for others. I, used to, I thought it was kind of corny when I first heard it and I laughed, but it really is what her life was about. She lived till she was 90 years old, giving and living for others, living and giving to others. You do that tonight. The information is on the screen of how you can give, whether it's Cash App or whether it's PayPal or whether it's mail. And we get gifts from all of those means or whether you mail it here to our post office box in Tulsa. Thank you very much. God bless you again. God be you. I salute you in your giving, and the universe, God, will honor it. John Stringer and his wife, Kathy, co-produced this, executive producers, and it was just very tastefully, tactfully, and a very timely way done. I thought it would be important to you to see it. It's not trying to make it a statement about racism at all. It's a statement about the value and virtue of human dignity. The, the elegance, eloquence, and excellence, or excellence, forward thrust of the human being, being human. I think it so beautifully capitulates the whole thing in a very sound and almost sovereign way that, that will minister to you. You'll love it. I want to close the program with that uh, tonight. Am I? Are we closing with this? Yeah. Um, because I, th I want you to go out with that in your mind. Now things, again, I keep telling you, are probably going to get worse before they get better. But remember, they will get better. And what you're seeing happening is part of the birthing of a new America, the dissolution and the dethroning of an old model, an old modality that no longer fits in the 21st century, no longer fits in our lives and our consciousness and character as a country. It looks contentious, but really it's cleansing and clearing and correcting, very powerful. Enjoy this and remember that you can't say all lives matter if you exclude any lives. All lives matter, black lives matter, and they all matter especially if they are hurting lives. And that's what we're most concerned about. Watch this. I'll come back with a final word. What if sharing black lives matter was, was a, a way, way to say I love, I love you? you. To, to the, the slaves, slaves that, that built, built this country, country but would never, never think Black Lives Matter. What if it were a way to say thank you to those that gave their lives? To bring equality in human relationships, in civil rights, in education, in economic opportunity. Black Lives Matter. What if simply acknowledging that Black Lives Matter was one way to show love to the Black ancestors and their descendants, the black current generation, and their descendants, the current generation, 
Black Lives Matter. A way to say thank you. A way to say thank you for being the glorious children of God that you are and have always been. Always been. Black Lives Matter. 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 What if there were a simple way to support and encourage the descendants of those who were dehumanized, oppressed, demonized, lynched, and murdered? Just for the murder. And murdered. Just for the black, black lives matter. Black lives, black lives matter. matter. What if it were a way to show unity? Acknowledging that black lives deserve the same care and respect as care all lives. Care and respect as all lives? Black, black lives, lives matter. matter. What if it were a simple way to shift the, the collective, collective consciousness, consciousness of the world, world by, by shining a light of love? And value and something that has been systematically devalued, both, both consciously, consciously and, unconsciously. and unconsciously, intentionally and unintentionally. Black, Black lives, lives matter. matter. What if it were a way to put ointment on a wound that takes the collective love of humanity to heal? Black lives matter. matter. What if it was all of this and more, just by you choosing it to me? In this moment, that's exactly what it means to me. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. We never dreamed we'd, people of color, never dreamed we'd see so many non-black people using the phrase, shouting it out loud, holding, uh, posters that say Black Lives Matter. It's really healing the culture and it's healing the consciousness of, of America. This is a new America. Confederate flags being removed, statues and statutes that re relate to Confederate mentalities being removed. This is a healing time. It's a hurting time, but it's a healing time. Again, not just a tipping point, it's literally a turning point. I had a dream last night of some of the saints I grew up with, and I remember Sister Denny was in this beautiful turquoise bright dress, and we were eating together, and, and they said, Sister Denny is here, and I could see her, and she waved at me. The last time I saw her was at church in Jackson Memorial, dancing on a Friday night, a cappella, and that was the last time she ever attended church, and the last time I saw her alive, and I sensed it that night. But for some reason, she showed up in my dream last night, and she smiled really big. She knew I was going to trying to get to her, but I couldn't. I didn't get over there to her, but she waved at me. She was eating as I was fixing a plate of food. My sister was there. And again, it reminded me that the ancestors are gathering around us. The old memories, that's why we do these. The old memories, the old memories, the things that nurtured us spiritually, the pillars and pillows of our faith, most of whom are gone now. So this whole thing is a prayer and it's a dare. Um, we are reaching out to cuddle, if you will, and capture and recapitulate things that brought us through the most difficult times in our lives. And this is one of them. And that same thing, when you, I say, when you don't know what to do, do what you know. And here's what we know. This is what we've known. And so I'm praying to you, praying for you tonight and appealing to you about what's already in you. I'm reminding you of the hope that is already in you, the hope that has sustained you all these decades or years or through some of the most difficult, strenuous, stressful times in your life. That hope is still alive. It's still in you. It is the Greek word elpis. It means happy anticipation of good, which is happy anticipation of God. That God is manifesting itself to, through, and as you in consciousness, in prayer, in faith, in uh, courage, it's there with you. The anointing is destroying the yokes of bondage, that which bound your mind and paralyzed your soul and crippled your essence. It's now freeing you. You're feeling it. It may make a tumor disappear or migraine headaches stop or the insomnia, the restlessness, the sleeplessness, the anxiety, the pain. I renounce all of that and I repeat and replace it with something powerful, something restorative, something regenerative for you in you, to you, through you, as you. Behold, 
in the name and nature of the Christ. And so it is. Amen and Ashe. Namaste. We'll see you next time. Anybody ready here in Azusa to walk out those doors with power? Put your hands together. Drop your microphones. Put your hands together. Are you ready? Put both hands up together. In Jesus' name, receive your anointing. In these uncertain times, go back to the foundation. Go back to what you know. Go back to Azusa. Join us every Friday night for music, ministry, and memories. As Bishop Carlton Pearson reminds the saints of the hope. That includes everybody. Loved by God, redeemed by Christ. All the power all the anointing is here, just as you remember it, and better than you've ever seen it before. Digitally remastered for the highest quality video and sound. Join the artists who became legends, and the legends who became immortal. Azusa Revisited. Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Don't you dare miss it. The spirit of Azusa is hitting America.